Okay, good morning, dear participants. So I welcome you all of you for the fifth day of FTP. So today we will discuss about the renewable energy resources and Indian grid. So in this session we are going to discuss what are the difficulties we are facing to incorporate huge renewable energy sources into our grid indian grid okay so first of all uh, we know a uh, lot of uh, investments are going on on uh, renewable energy resources so in the last 10 years uh, we have invested amount of 2.5 trillion dollars worldwide it was about 2.5 trillion dollars of amount to enhance the penetration of renewable energy resources it's a very very huge amount okay so especially we are having solar and wind the frequently used and uh, successful renewable energy resources are solar and wind energy okay uh, in india also so wind and solar it has increased sufficiently significantly they have increased in the last uh, 10 years and it reduces the emission of carbon dioxide so a lot of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases have been released from conventional fuel based fossil fuel based power plants so in order to mitigate the emission we are concentrating on renewable energy resources so after integrating a huge amount of renewable energy resources we have experienced the minimization in that uh, emission okay so uh, our attention uh, have shifted towards this renewable energy resources okay so with the declining cost uh, during 2010 uh, before 2010 the tariff for one unit of solar power is about 15 rupees one unit solar power 15 rupees but in 2020 it is about 2.44 rupees 15 rupees in 2010 and 2.44 rupees in 2020 so it is a significant reduction in the fuel cost that means production cost solar energy cost okay so this cost encourages the uh, utility to shift towards the renewable energy resources particularly solar and wind okay so the unavailability of the fossil fuel is the main reason anyway we are concentrating on solar and wind energy system okay so then grid integration is uh, is not an easy job without this uh, engineering and economic challenges we need to satisfy or we need to mitigate these challenges and after mitigating these challenges only we can successfully utilize the renewable energy resources completely okay so we are we are going we are all going to discuss about these points later okay then uncertainty and reserve capacity so uncertainty is an important uh, characteristics of a renewable energy resources such as solar and wind solar energy will not be available during night time then uh, the wind energy is available only for uh, five months maximum of five months per year so there is a huge uncertainty there they are completely depending on the seasons okay then the variability can lead to increased usage of fossil fuels so this disadvantages of this renewable energy resources as uh, uh, encourages or discourages the usage of renewable energy resources it has 
the main disadvantage of this uh, uh, uncertainty and the variability so the utility continuing to use the uh, fossil fuel based power generation so that is a particular main thing then finally uh, it presents a significant barrier to the private investment in the deregulated power system so there will be a hesitation to incorporate more renewable energy resources reason we have discussed uncertainty and its uh, variability so you need you need to know deregulated power generation deregulated power generation means uh, in a power sector the we are having uh, generation transmission and distribution okay so each and every sector can be handled by different utilities so that means deregulated power system one company take over the generation area another company take over the transmission and uh, another company take over the uh, distribution so this concept is known as deregulated power system so this deregulated power system encourages the private investment also so any multinational corporate company can take over the distribution area so they assure the uh, the delivery of power to the consumer so this is a deregulated power system so this uncertainty of the renewable energy resources is a barrier to get more investment on the private investment on the uh, deregulated power system that is uh, an important thing okay anyway so we should know many uh, renewable energy resources we are all know okay so particularly uh, in this session we are going to discuss about uh, indian perspective completely indian perspective what are the renewable energy resources available in india what is our target to be achieved and uh, how we can we are going to uh, handle the challenges so these are the things we are going to discuss now okay so our target india has a huge target of 450 gigawatts of renewable energy resources at the year of 2030 so before 2030 we need to achieve 450 gigawatts of renewable energy resources okay so uh now now 2020 21 so 21 we have achieved only 160 160 gigawatts only we have achieved in 2021 uh, only we have 9 years we should achieve this 450 gigawatts of uh, renewable energy installation okay so uh, i have uh, placed some renewable energy resources in this slide solar hydro wind tidal geothermal and uh, biomass the most important renewable energy resources in that in these resources uh, we are concentrating more on solar and wind energy particularly solar energy okay so uh, other resources are uh, renewable energy resources, but they have some limitations we can able to uh, install huge amount of hydro power plant immediately it's not possible it's a huge task to build a hydro power plant it will take at least 15 years and uh, it should be built uh, across a river uh, the construction of dam is a huge task so uh, to build a hydro power plant is not an easy job okay so we can we, we can we should concentrate on solar and wind energy 
okay so in indian perspective tidal energy is also possible but we have not initiated to implement this tidal energy till date geothermal uh, some places have been identified for uh, geothermal resources the process is going on to uh, install geothermal power plants biomass plants are available uh, in many places but the capacity of that power plant is very very low it's not a huge capacity uh, one megawatt or five per kilowatt in that amount only we are having okay so our concentration is only on solar and wind energy okay so in solar energy uh, there is a the important concern we are having is investment so huge amount of investment uh, to be given to the solar energy investment is not okay investment we can give no problem now, any power plant we need to build means there will be a huge capital investment that's uh, not a huge issue but a uh, huge area the land occupied for the solar power plant is very very high if you need to build a 100 megawatt thermal power plant means it takes only 5 acres a maximum of 10 acres thermal power plant for 100 megawatt okay at the same time if you need to build a 100 megawatt of solar power plant means it takes more than 70 acres okay so the difference is very very high so it occupy huge amount of land to build the solar power plant so that's the main uh, concern in this solar power plant and the next thing is uh, we should know the difference between installed capacity and the power generation so that are different uh, if you build a 100 megawatt solar power plant then your output power power generation will not be 100 it's very very low if you if you are if you have built a thermal power plant for 100 megawatt means you can generate up to 85 megawatt because the capacity credit factor for thermal power plant is very very high comparatively solar power plant is very very low okay so the capacity credit for solar power plant is only about 35 percentage okay so 100 megawatt of installed capacity solar power plant can generate maximum of 35 megawatt of power the power generation will be maximum of 35 megawatt only because the capacity credit is very very low for solar as well as wind because during uh, night time it will not be available the peak time is only about 4 to 5 hours okay morning 10 to 5 uh, evening 5 5 o'clock the generation will be high another time it will be low after 6 6:30 there will be no generation and similarly uh, morning up to morning 7 o'clock there will be no generation okay so this is the reason we are lagging in the solar power plant solar power generation if you need to uh, satisfy or if you need to uh, neglect this uh, drawbacks means we need to install huge amount of batteries so energy storage device particularly batteries so the investment cost will become more the uh, incorporation of batteries results with the even more insulation cost and the maintenance of this uh, battery is also having some maintenance cost so overall the power production cost will be increased so nowadays 
we have not installed any energy storage devices in renewable energy power sources okay so the renewable energy resources generates the power and we have utilized them directly or they have been connected with the grid directly without any battery packages in current perspective in indian perspective okay then uh, hydro so particularly in india north east states assam tripura arunachal pradesh so these states okay and okay. uh, now we can continue uh, next thing is hydro power plant so we have discussed uh, hydro power plant uh, the investment cost is very very high it should be built across the natural environment all the two or three sides have been covered with the mountain and one side we can build a dam so uh, the structure should be uh, natural okay so if you need to build a hydro power plant means there are a lot of people need to be displaced from their respective places okay so It, that will be a huge concern people displacement is a huge concern then uh we are no it's highly seasonally dependent only rainy season only we are having water in the reservoir okay so we can't be able to generate throughout the year and uh, even though we are having water throughout the year we can't be able to generate the electricity because uh, india is a, a agricultural country uh, for generating power from the hydro power plant we need to dispose huge amount of water okay so that water after power generation that water has been disposed to the uh, through the river okay so in a agricultural country the farmers are depending on that water so this is the may month so uh, last may month uh, even though we are having huge amount of water in the reservoir but the farmers have not plant anything in their fields okay so uh, we are having water so we can generate electricity and uh, we dispose the water the farmers have not used that water because there will be no crop in their field okay so what they said uh, the, uh, they have wasted the water uh, next month only we are going to plant some crops so but uh, they have wasted the water so these are the relating things we need to consider okay so even though we are having water in the reservoir we can't be able to generate electricity It's highly depending on lot of factors we need to consider okay then uh, another one concept is there in hydro power plant that is uh, second reservoir second reservoir uh, we have generated water from sorry we have generated electricity from the uh, hydro power station then we dispose as the water it will reach the river so after some distance we have built another dam a yeah, mini dam not that huge dam mini dam and we can install another one small hydro power station mini okay wow. so 
mini hydro power station we can install and we can generate more electricity from the same amount of water the same water okay so this concept has been adopted in uh, idiki hydro power station kerala they have commissioned and they have ready to implement this uh, mini hydro power station in the same power station once we have generated electricity from the main station and we disposes the water and they have built a small dam and they built a mini hydro power station and they can they can generate the electricity so they are uh, this process is uh, currently currently in progress in idiki hydro power station kerala okay then another concept in hydro power station is pumped hydro power station okay uh, it's a type of storage device pumped hydro we all know uh, during uh, off peak time we can uh, pump the water to the upper reservoir and we can use that water for generating electricity at the peak time okay so off peak time we can use it to pump the water and during peak time we can utilize that water and generate electricity and we can supply the electricity to the consumer so off peak time we can generate we can pump up the water okay so that is the concept in hydro power station okay then wind we are going to uh, discuss about uh, wind power station so wind power generation lot of wind farms are there particularly in tamil nadu uh, in india the largest single located wind power plant is available wind farm is available in rl vaimuli uh, nearby uh, tirunelveli and kanyakumari okay rl vaimuli 30 uh, if, if you are going for uh, uh, rl vaimuli kanyakumari you can see 30 that is a single located uh, largest wind power station or wind farm in india okay uh, it has more than 7800 megawatt of wind power generation that mukundal has 700 sorry 7800 so that is very very high okay uh, why we are having uh, this huge amount of uh, wind power plants in a single area means it's highly depends depending on their that location okay that location having very very high uh, velocity wind energy throughout the year okay due to the uh, natural structure the western ghats Uh, is going to end in that area western ghats and so the a natural tunnel shape is available in that area all the uh, two sides having mountains that mountains has concentrated and it make a tunnel shape in that mukundal so the wind flows In that area has been concentrated towards the Mukundal due to the natural structure of the Western Ghats. Okay, so all over the year uh, we are having huge amount of wind energy in that area. So we can install more uh, wind uh, turbines and we can generate the electricity in that Mukundal. Okay, now what is what are the Uh, enhancements or developments in wind energy means we are uh, having gearless wind turbines okay so it's a first concept in uh, wind energy conversion system gearless wind turbine because huge amount of mechanical losses are there in our uh, current wind turbines it generate electricity maybe from the wind energy it start to rotate but that rotating mechanical energy is converted into electricity by means of generator so before that we are having a huge setup that is known as gearbox that gearbox 
uh, increases the speed of the uh, rotation. The rotating speed has been increased by means of the gearbox, but there will be a huge mechanical losses. So in order to avoid nowadays, uh, Suzlan, Suzlan is a, a huge company. They are manufacturing these large wind turbines. Okay, so they are in the process of building gearless wind turbine. So the rotating energy from the turbine has been connected to the uh, generator itself by means of some components, not the gearbox. Okay, so the losses can be avoided. Okay, that's an important thing. It increases the efficiency. Definitely, it increases the efficiency. So, if nowadays efficiency is uh, below 30 percentage in a wind turbine, efficiency is below 30 percentage. But after incorporating these new developments, we can expect it will be more than 50 percentage. Okay. So, we can increase the efficiency more than 20 percentage. Okay. Then, another one concept. Uh, we all know cutting speed and cut out to speed. So cut in speed means uh, the minimum speed of the wind uh, in which the turbine start to rotate. That means the minimum velocity. If you are having minimum of six uh, miles per hour, six miles per hour, Wind velocity is there only the wind turbine starts to rotate or else it will not start to rotate. Okay. And that is cut in speed. Okay. Cut out speed means the maximum amount of wind velocity the wind turbine can withstand. Okay. Maximum of 25 miles per hour. Up to 25 miles per hour the wind turbine rotates after 25 means it's more than 25 means definitely that wind turbine stop it take it as a emergency situation there will be a cyclone or huge wind energy or other okay so uh, during cyclone the wind velocity is very very high more than 25 so the cutout speed has been reached so the wind turbine stop to rotate Okay, so our concept in recent development is to uh, decrease the cutting speed even more. So if there is a mild wind energy means that turbine will not rotate. Okay, so nowadays we are going to reduce the cutting speed below three miles per hour. So even we are having a mild wind, we are able to rotate the wind turbine okay by means of reducing the weight of the blades also so a uh, lot of uh, developments in the composite of the blade materials okay so uh, it definitely it increases the strength of the blade at the same time it reduces the weight of the blade okay so uh, you can start to rotate with the minimum amount of wind energy, wind velocity, okay. So, we have discussed about solar, hydro and wind. Particularly, we should concentrate on solar and wind energy, okay. <clears throat> okay, what are the challenges we are experiencing in these renewable energy resources? The main thing is intermittency and variability. Solar intermittency and wind variability. We are able to define or we are able to, we can't able to predict the amount of wind uh, will flow or the amount of solar irradiation will fall on a particular day. Okay, so that's the important thing. And uh, uncertainty, hard to forecast. So, what we have discussed. Uh, next month, July 15th, the uh, wind energy, the velocity of wind will be 
10 miles per hour. Approximately, we can predict it, but exactly, we can't be able to predict. It. Okay, so even the meteorological department can't be able to predict exactly. Okay, uh, for example, uh, last month, uh, May month, uh, we are having a lot of power crisis in Tamil Nadu. Power cuts are there. Uh, till they continues. What's the reason means? They are uh, planned previously. Uh, two months before they have planned. Okay, during May month, Agni uh, Nachitam. Okay, 15 days Agni Nachitam. At that time, uh, we will have huge amount of uh, solar radiation. So, we can generate more amount of solar energy. So, we can stop another other power stations. Slightly, we can reduce the power generation from the other power stations. They have planned. But what happened means, during this uh, May month, uh, particularly in Agni Chitram time, there, are, there, will be a, not, there will not be a huge amount of uh, solar radiation. Okay, the, there are uh, high, highly cloudy days. That days have gone with a highly cloudy days. Okay, so as per the forecasting data, uh, we can't be able to uh, plan our generation. That will be a huge deviation. Minimum of 20 percentage of deviation is there. Okay, well, so we can't be able to uh, relay or uh, depends on that predicted value. Uh, climate changes by hourly, by hourly changes completely. So we can be able to uh, predict or label on that uh, generated data. Okay. Or we can be able to follow that data exactly. We are ready to face anything. That's the main thing. Okay. Okay. Local dependence. Okay. Local dependence resource availability is uh, on site. But uh, requirement is in another side. That's the main thing. Okay. So uh, you know, uh, we can think uh, Chennai is a city, it's a metropolitan city where the uh, demand for power is in the middle of the city. But the power generation is from far away from the city. We can be able to install a huge power, power plant or we can be able to install a huge solar power plant for 100 acres of land in the middle of the city. It's not possible. It's a wastage of that land. Okay. So, uh, out of the city or far away from the load center, we have uh, incorporated these uh, power plants or we have built that power plant. From that power station, we need to transport the power, we need to transmit the power to the uh, heart of the city or the uh, requirement where the requirements is there. Okay, so there will be a transmission, transmission losses are there. Okay, so in the there will be a difference in uh, availability and the uh, requirement. Okay, so offshore and deserts. Okay, offshore, we can install offshore wind power plants. A lot of in Japan, the, Japan they are having uh, offshore wind power plants. Okay, so the only drawback is to the power transmission is the only concern. Okay, we need to transmit the power to the load center. That's the main thing. Anyway, uh, in India, uh, they have commissioned to build offshore wind power plant in two areas. That is Kanyakumari and uh, Gulf of Manar. Okay, that the two places have been identified by the power system planners to build new offshore wind power plants. The wind power plants has been built inside the water, inside the uh, mid of the sea. Okay, so they have initiated to build them. Uh, at the end of 2030, we are expecting to build these power plants in Kanyakumari and Gulf of Manar. Okay, 
okay then next point is non synchronous technology connected through power electronic devices and unable to unable to support traditional grid services okay so these renewable energy resources has been connected to the grid by means of power electronic devices there are converters there are huge inverters are there okay so nowadays we are connecting the uh, we are connected with the grid direct connection okay synchronous technology are else okay suppose um, okay uh, if the power generation is excess means so uh, the current time we are running a power plant okay we are running a power plant we are generating electricity we are supplying to the consumer the power generation has been uh, uh, suddenly increases power demand has been increased suddenly so we need to satisfy the demand we should generate more amount of electricity and we need to supply that electricity okay so it will be possible in a uh, uh, thermal power station we can increase the amount of coal we can boil more amount of water okay then we can generate more amount of uh, steam we should we start rotate the turbine continuously non stop we can run then we can generate electricity and we can meet out the uh, extra demand okay suppose uh, the demand has been reduced if the demand has been reduced but the generation is high means we can use that uh, extra produced steam energy for another purposes okay using condenser we can uh, convert that steam as into water that's a concept in other countries they can use that generated extra generated steam energy for another purposes so such as room heating they can use uh, vessel washing uh, cloth washing in washing machines and cloth drying so they can use uh, but in the perspective of this renewable energy resources we can be able to do these activities there will be a uh, amount of uh, generation that amount cannot be changed the amount of power generation cannot be changed by manual okay is highly depend upon the uh, nature we can able to uh, in uh, thermal power station we can able to increase the amount of coal or we can reduce the amount of coal the input we can reduce or increase but in this renewable energy sources we can able to stop the wind now we can able to stop the irradiation falls on the uh, solar panel that is not also part possible okay so this is the important thing we are going to discuss uh, in the next slides okay. so in india we res target we are having some target we already discussed in the first slide itself uh, why all the countries have fixed the target means in 2015 uh, more than 150 countries around the world have signed the agreement that is known as the paris agreement there is a summit that was happened in uh, paris so 150 more than 150 countries have signed in that agreement what that agreement says uh, the researchers and the uh, forecasters have uh, identified that in the year of 2050 the average global temperature will rise up to 4 plus 4 degrees celsius okay what they say and our is the average temperature is about 32 degrees celsius okay we are in tamil nadu we are having 32 degrees celsius normally okay 2020 okay in 2050 2050 that average temperature will be 36 degrees 
okay due to the uh, development in industries and transportation we can we are uh, releasing huge amount of carbon dioxide and uh, greenhouse gases even in power generation okay so due to the increased amount of these greenhouse gases that will be a depletion in ozone layer that increases the uh, global average temperature so uh, particularly in antarctica we are going to facing a huge problem the ice rocks are melting last week also a huge ice rock has been displaced break and displaced so what are the reason the main reason is increasing in global average temperature okay so if this manner continues means in 2050 the average temperature will rise more than 4 degrees celsius okay so in tamil nadu we are having 32 nowadays 32 degrees celsius in 2050 it will be 36 or 37 degrees celsius if we have not adopted this new energy resources okay so not only in power generation in transportation also so lot of e vehicles are there so the developments in e vehicles are uh, day to day increasing so we should adopt them also so we need to reduce the amount of emission okay so uh, after that agreement uh, that agreement uh, signed in 2015 okay then 2016 is a excellent year 2016 is a uh, excellent year for renewable energy generation in that year we have installed very 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 huge amount of renewable energy resources in the next year itself we have installed huge amount of renewable energy resources and our next thing is uh, to reduce the emission from the transportation in that perspective uh, bs4 engines have been launched the old bs3 uh, engines have been uh, stopped okay so bs4 bs5 is there okay so that is there are uh, green engines they minimize uh, minimizes the they minimize the em emission from the uh, for, uh, transportation sector okay so that the thing we have achieved so in this slide we are having year wise uh, insulation targets we have fixed it. okay at the end of 2021 22 we should achieve 160 gigawatt hour so but we have achieved i think 130 something we have achieved Uh, in the next slide you can see this slide we can we can see okay this is the data from mnre ministry of new and renewable energy resources have given this data <coughs> okay fine okay yeah here we are very clear uh, data so in india uh, we are having the installed capacity of renewable energy resources as 136 gigawatt hour okay so total capacity is 373 all the power plants are united but among them 136 gigawatts of renewable energy resources are there that is only 38 percentage okay more than uh, nearly 40 percentage we have achieved okay in that renewable energy resources the wind capacity is about 38.78 gigawatts okay so 136 total renewable energy resources among that 136 in that 136 38.78 is about wind energy and similarly we are having the solar energy of 36.9 gigawatts so 36.9 gigawatts of solar energy okay so the indian government had a initial target of 20 gigawatts of surplus uh or additional capacity in the year of 2022 okay so nearly 40 40 totally 136 
nearly 40 gigawatts of solar and 40 gigawatts of uh, wind. So other things are biomass, uh, particularly hydro. Lot of hydro power plants are there. In uh, Northeast India, the main power generating resources is hydro energy. Okay. So we can discuss. So this is the uh, wind speed map in India. You can see uh, that a red color, red colored area having huge wind energy resources. You can see Tamil Nadu, uh, Karnataka, then Gujarat, Rajasthan. These are the states having very high wind velocity throughout the year. So, uh, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat have utilized them very, very high. Okay. So, India's largest uh, wind power generating state is Tamil Nadu. Okay, more than 8,000 megawatt of electricity is from wind energy resources. Okay. So, this is the solar resource map that dark area, that means red colored area having very high intensity of solar energy, solar radiation. Uh, Tamil Nadu, you can see that of hot spotted or the hot spots are there. And Rajasthan, we are having uh, India's highest uh, solar availability areas, solar intensity areas in Rajasthan. Okay. So, in the both of that figures, you can identify these areas. This Uttar Pradesh, Nepal. So these areas having very minimum amount of wind energy, as well as they are having very minimum amount of solar energy. Okay. So they are highly depending on the water availability. Okay. Uh, there are Himalayan hills as well. So these states having huge enormous amount of water resources, so they can generate their electricity from hydro power stations. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the monthly wind generation plot. You can see uh, April, May, then June month start to generate more amount of wind power. The wind power generation in the month of June, July, August is very high. After September month, suddenly the power generation from wind energy become reduces. Okay. So in India, uh, we can see that is similar to Tamil Nadu because India's largest uh, wind power station is in Tamil Nadu. So almost the same. Tamil Nadu data, India data, if you can compare both are almost the same. Okay. So nowadays, June month, the already the wind flows to start. Okay. Then June, July, August, it will be high. Then suddenly it will reduce. So at the month of October, November, December, the, during the rainy season, the, there will be no wind energy. Okay. Very minimum. Almost to zero in December. December is almost to zero. Okay. Then this is the solar power generation of a day uh, in India. You can see during the time you can see seven after seven o'clock itself will start and it get the peak value at the time of 12, 1, 2, 3, up to 3, 4, 4 o'clock, up to 4 o'clock, it will be some having some peak values. After that, it will be reduced. So the important thing is it will not be same for all the day. That's the main thing. Okay. So you can be able to predict. This is the plot for one day, but it will not be same for all the day. Someday, uh, 11 o'clock, there will be a cloudy. So definitely this peak will be, there will be no peak. It will be reduced here. So uh, due to some uh, rain or due to some cloudy uh, conditions, that pattern will change, definitely it will change, okay. So uh, the ambiguity of this uh, renewable energy resources, what are the some uh, intermittency, we can see 
so wind power the main thing is wind speed the velocity of the wind speed sorry the velocity of the wind changes continuously so we can able to predict them okay well, so it is highly seasonally dependent it definitely affects the power generation and humidity also there is there is a humidity means in the air means the flow of uh, the velocity has been reduced due to the humidity okay if there is humidity in air means the velocity is reduced so we can be able to generate more amount of wind energy and during rainy season you all know sometimes there will be a cyclone or uh, a hurricane so uh, at that time also we stop the wind turbine due to the emergency condition or, or else there will be a huge rain scene there will be no uh, wind flow then ampere temperature is also there dust concentration in the wind energy is also a factor to reduce the uh, power generation okay at the, similarly we are having solar power also solar radiation so the amount of uh, light energy falls on the solar panel depends this factor that's a main important thing for power generation solar radiation that wind speed also cloudy cover during cloudy season there will be no power generation or there will be minimum amount of power generation humidity also a uh, factor and dust concentration if you are having more dust in the air means it may lay on the uh, solar panels so it reduces the power generating efficiency and during rainy season there will be minimum amount of solar power generation so these are the factors then what we have discussed here non synchronous power generation there will be no rotating equipment okay we have we are going to connect this uh, solar and uh, wind power plants by means of the power electronic devices to the grid so there are there are less response of grid requirements that's a non synchronous okay so this is the uh, demand flat okay we have discussed uh, this uh, uh, power generation options and their availability what we have discussed here there okay so what about our demand we are going to satisfy the demand but uh, these we have discussed up to we have discussed the renewable energy resources and the air intermittency and that variability we can be able to generate same amount of electricity or uh, uh, what we have decided to generate so that is not possible we have discussed it. that generation uh, irregularities we have discussed it. okay what about our demand okay this is the demand plot for india on the day 30 12 okay so you can see it has two peaks okay so here this is a peak uh, okay now uh, here we have two peaks here on ap and here on peak okay why i have chosen this date means uh, 30th december 2020 is the highest recorded demand this day has the highest recorded demand and that has been satisfied successfully india's india's highest uh, amount of demand up to this date is 180 gigawatts this 180 gigawatt has been satisfied successfully by our resources in the day 30 12 2020 okay so the demand pattern you can you can see there will be two peak one 180 and then one 170 180 170 we having two peaks uh, morning 9 10 11 and evening uh, 6 7 8 at that time we are having the peak okay
Okay, how we satisfy this demand? Okay, that's the important thing. You were uh, up to time, uh, this time we have discussed a uh, lot of uh, renewable energy resources and the availability, install capacity, everything we have discussed. But this plot clearly explains you we have satisfied this 180 gigawatts of electricity mostly by the thermal power station. This uh, pink color line, you can see. 180 is the maximum. More than 130 gigawatts we have generated power from the thermal power station alone. So we have decided how much amount we are lagging in renewable energy resources. Okay. So solar has been utilized during its availability. It's about 80 gigawatts we have generated by its uh, during its availability. Okay, it's available is only from 8 o'clock to evening 5 o'clock. Okay. So till day we are highly depending on the thermal power station. That's the main concept. Okay, here we can see the numerical data. Okay, so more than 75 percentage. Okay, totally 180, uh, 130 gigawatts has been from this uh, renewable, sorry, this thermal power station. So that's the thing we are discussed here. More than 75 percentage from coal power station. Okay, well, two from lignite and uh, seven from hydro, two from nuclear and two percentage from gas. Only 10 percentage is from renewable energy resources. Okay, India's largest power generating day is 30th December 2020 till date. Okay, only 10 percentage is from renewable energy resources. So how we are lagging? How much amount we are lagging? Okay, this is the hourly demand. Three o'clock, nine o'clock is sixty, eleven o'clock fifty-seven, and three o'clock it reduces to thirty-six. Again, it increases to uh, forty-six, and it reduces to six thousand. So very, very low. At the during the night time. Okay, so lot of peaks. 60, 57, 46, lot of peaks in that day. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have discussed yeah, demand plot. Similarly, after yeah, three months, uh, that is December 2020, now March 2021, after three days, three months, how the pattern is there? Okay. So the pattern is highly different. There is a uh, here on peak. Here on peak, here on peak. Okay, so the pattern will not be same throughout the year. It changes continually, changes. Okay, so there is a huge difference within three months of uh, time, three months of time span. The pattern has differs a lot. Okay, so how we have satisfied means. Here also we are having thermal power station only. This data has been extracted from uh, MNRI website. Okay. And we are having minimum amount of hydrogen, sorry, solar also. So same plot. So here we can see. Okay. And in that plot, we are having 50. 60 megawatt, 60,000 megawatt, 56,000 megawatts, 46,000 megawatts. But here we are having 32. So within the period of three months, there will be a huge difference. Okay, this is a, a renewable and non renewable power generation fuel mix ratio. We are having only 10 percentage in each and every month you can see nearly 10 percentage where if you are, if you are seeing 107.69 and 
ten point zero. So ten percent. So our installation of renewable energy resources or power generation installation may change or installation may increases. We have discussed more than total installed capacity. In the total installed capacity, we are having forty percent of renewable energy resources, but in overall power generation only 10 percentage is from renewable energy resources okay this is the factor we can increase the power generation we can increase the insulation capacity but can be able to increase the power generation so there is a huge difference 40 percentage more 100 percentage you know, 40 percentage is from renewable energy resources in installed capacity but Power generation is only 10 percentage. Okay. So, anyway, we should increase the penetration even more to achieve our target. Okay. Uh, so, from this figure, you can yeah, easily identify our target. In the year 2030, our target is about 4 lakh 33 35. That means 435 4, gigawatt hours. Okay, 435 gigawatt hours. And 2040, we should achieve 600 gigawatt hour. Gigawatts, sorry, gigawatt hour, like gigawatts. So our target in 2030 is we have discussed 450 yearly. In the first slide, we have discussed our target is. 450 gigawatts in 2030. But we are going to reach 435. Okay, no problem. Then at the end of 2040, we should achieve the target of 600 gigawatts. Okay, this is our uh, planned wise uh, target to achieve the renewable energy penetration. So, what are all the Challenges in grid integration. We have generated electricity from the renewable energy sources, but we need to utilize them properly. That's the main concern we are facing today. Okay. So unpredictable generation. We have discussed a lot about this unpredictable generation and incalculable demand. Okay. So the demand pattern is highly changing and Power generation is, cannot be predicted due to this uh, environmental condition and there is seasonal changes. You can be able to predict that generation exactly. Okay, then incalculable demand also. So, in these two perspectives, we need to uh, incorporate or integrate the renewable energy resources into the grid. Okay, we can see. So, this slide gives you a clear perspective or clear uh, solution to the problem what we have mentioned earlier. So the first thing is cost perspective. So the renewable energy resources are land intensive and have very low CUS capacity utilization factor what we have discussed okay. uh, with the 40 percentage of installed capacity we are and able to generate only 10 percentage of power. So the capacity utilization factor is very, very low in renewable energy resources. We should increase them. So a lot of recent developments are researchers are going there to increase the efficiency of the renewable energy resources. Okay, how we can increase means we can uh, integrate some energy resources. That means energy storage resources. Okay, so we will discuss in the next slide. Okay. Then unmatched generation and uh, demand. Okay, demand reaches uh, evening peak at a uh, seven, but at that time there will be no power generation from any energy resources, particularly in solar. Daily evening 7 o'clock, there will be a huge demand. The demand is in peak, but at that time, we can be able to generate power from the renewable energy resources. 
what can we do okay so we need to store the energy during the availability evening uh, up to 4 o'clock we are having huge amount of electricity generated from the uh, renewable energy resources we need to store them in a battery and we can able to dispatch them during the demand uh, peak demand okay that's the thing then another one concept is the uh, one nation one ration is they are going to implement one nation one ration one nation one election also central government going to implement okay they are in uh, not going to implement means uh, they have discussed to implement okay so similarly one nation one grid and one frequency that uh, if they have implement the means this power crisis will end okay so if you generated electricity here in uh, ramnathapuram from uh, solar power plant means that electricity can be supplied to uh, maharashtra or andhra pradesh or karnataka okay so if we integrated or we, we, if we connected these uh, grids together means we can achieve this so uh, there will be a huge demand in karnataka during uh, one o'clock to four o'clock uh, after one o'clock to four o'clock evening four o'clock they are having huge demand but uh, with their uh, power generating resources they, are, they can be able to satisfy the demand but in tamil nadu we are having excess amount of electricity or generation during that hour we have wasted that generation we have wasted there will be no demand in our sector so the power generation from that wind energy and the solar energy during that time has been wasted so uh, what will the useful point so you can connect the grid together means you can supply the power generated from tamil nadu to karnataka so national grid that means one nation one grid one frequency one frequency so all over india we are having same frequency 50 hertz so there will be no problem we can connect everything okay uh, then another option is there uh, uh, we can simply say we can connect everything but there are lot of practical difficulties are there so we can uh, connect the grid step by step so initial step in the first we can connect the regional dispatch centers so india having five regional dispatch centers okay so northern uh, railway similar to railway uh, northern railway northern railway southern southern railway west and east and they are having four railway section adhe mari same thing in we can process in electricity also so in india we are having five load dispatch centers that is northern load dispatch center in new delhi western load dispatch center in mumbai and uh, eastern uh, load dispatch center in calcutta and the southern uh, load dispatch center in uh, bangalore and the uh, north east load dispatch center in chillon they are uh, generating electricity from hydro power plants mostly from hydro power plants okay so what we can do we can connect them initially we should connect all the power generation all the power plants and the consumers in southern region so southern regions mean bangalore andhra pradesh kerala and tamil nadu these four states coming under southern regional load dispatch center of india so we can connect them and we can uh, satisfy the demand with the available resources 
successfully. Okay. After that, we can connect all the uh, power generating uh, resources in India. So this is the simplest way to integrate the electricity, sorry, integrate the renewable energy sources into the grid. Uh, before that, we should connect uh, state uh, low dispatching. In Tamil Nadu itself, we are having three low dispatch centers. Uh, north in Chennai, then uh, west in Hero, and uh, south in Madurai. So we need to connect them initially. Then uh, state to state we can connect. Okay, that is the only possible way to achieve this power. Or else, mostly the power generation from wind energy and uh, solar energy has been wasted uh, during its uh, peak power generation. Okay. Next thing, uh, renewable energy generation depends on nature. Okay, we have uh, decided. And the cut time is very restricted. There will be no cut time. It should run continuously like a thermal power plant. The thermal power plant is continuously running for 50 days or 60 days without any maintenance. Similarly, in the similar way, we should run the uh, renewable energy resources also, but it is not possible. Okay, so that's the reason why we are uh, uh, having these renewable energy resources as the main uh, power generating units in our country. Okay, some countries having uh, continuous wind energy. Okay, so uh, I think it's a Denmark. Denmark is the country that having power generation from wind energy alone. There will be no other uh, power generating options. Okay. They are generating electricity from wind power generation alone. Okay. Because uh, the structure of the Denmark is in a tunnel shape. Okay. They, so they are generating electricity. Any messages? Okay, we are going to complete. Hmm. So, solution, what are the solutions? That wider balancing area, what we have discussed. The balancing area is wider means we can uh, connect the, the power generation and the requirement. In Tamil Nadu, we are having power generation and the requirement is in Maharashtra means we can supply them. Okay, so the wider balancing area and energy storage system. So we are having uh, five energy storage system, batteries. So chemical energy storage system, we are all know. Then thermal energy storage system, capturing the heat and cold to create energy on demand or absorbed energy needs. That means of thermal energy. Then mechanical energy, we can store it the kinetic or gravitical energy, gravitational energy to store electricity and hydrogen. So the excess amount of electricity generated has been converted into hydrogen gas by means of electrolysis process. Okay, then final one is pumped hydro. Already we have discussed it. So, highly possible is battery and uh, this uh, pumped hydro power. Okay, well, battery and pumped hydro power is uh, easily implemented, can be easily implemented. Then, flexible system. So, demand side management we have discussed load shedding. Okay, load shedding option is there. Uh, we can change the load. Uh, suppose if, yeah, if, they, if there is an industry, they are requiring power from the uh, generation station. During the peak hour means, we can ask them uh, to shift the load. 
or we can ask them to uh, uh, do their generation during the off peak hours. Okay, so uh, in India, Pune, in the city of Pune, uh, they are uh, implementing this. Okay, uh, its name is Pune model. Simply, they are known, uh, known as Pune model. What they are doing means uh, during peak hours, they won't supply the power to the industries. Okay, that electricity port will not supply electricity during the peak hours to the industries. During peak hours, if you need electricity, means you can generate by yourself. You can uh, that the industry should generate electricity by themselves. Okay, they can implement a solar plant or they can implement a uh, uh, mini uh, thermal power station or biogas power station. Okay, uh, but during peak time, uh, the electricity board will not give electricity. If you need electricity, means you the tariff will be very very good. One unit of electricity is forty rupees. If you need, you can buy. That's the thing happening in Pune. Okay, so if we, that should concept should encourage them to build their own. Power generation units. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The next thing is uh, energy forecasting and planning. So there is a lot of thing for load forecasting and electricity expansion planning. So very short term planning is there. Short term, medium term, long term. Up to thirty years you can plan. In 2050, what will be the generation? Sorry, what will be the demand? And how we can achieve that demand? Each thing can be planned by now itself. Okay. So it's coming under energy purchasing. How much amount of energy we are going to purchase from other state? Then how we can transmit and distribute the uh, generated electricity to the consumer? That thing we have, we can plan. How we can expand the electricity generation and the transmission capability? How we can expand? It. So this thing can be planned. So generation, transmission, and distribution uh, in substation level also we can plan this. Are all coming under power system planning? Okay. So demand side management is there. So operation and maintenance planning and financial planning is also there. So we, we can allot a budget, a uh, budget of 2000 crore. So up the maximum amount of 2000 crore, we should satisfy our demand in 2050. Okay. So with the budget of 2000 crore, we can plan now. Okay, this amount of solar, this amount of hydro, this amount of wind, and this amount of thermal. So we can satisfy the demand as well as we can we can generate electricity within the uh, given amount. Okay, within the uh, given two thousand crore. That's the thing we are saying. Financial plan. Okay. Same time we can uh, plan to reduce uh, CO two emission also. During planning itself, we should consider uh, the CO2 emission also. We should minimize them. Okay, so automatically we should give more preference to the renewable energy resources. So these are all some important uh, software we are having for energy planning. Okay, so the green colored uh, are very very frequently used. Software for renewable energy planning, sorry, energy planning. Okay, so a lot of uh, researchers are going there. Uh, many of them have completed their PhD in this power system planning. So it's not a huge task, it's very, very simple. Okay, so these are all some automatic software pack packages. So using these packages, you can get. The exact plan. So, what you are going to do means just to give some input data. This 
software will predict the future and give you a plan so uh, you should give a input data with some constraint this is the budget constraint uh, the maximum budget allotted for power generation in 2050 is 2000 crore okay maximum limit is 2000 crore and maximum thermal utilization will be uh, 100 gigawatts so uh, it will not go beyond the 100 gigawatts so uh, we have reduced the thermal energy utilization we should increase the renewable energy utilization so 6000 sorry 600 gigawatts of renewable energy should be utilized you can give a constraint to this software and it will plan the future generation expansion okay these are all some important softwares and GC softwares to implement them. Okay, I can conclude. Anyway, uh, the growth of renewable energy is imminent and adoption of the change in the need of the hour rather than finding the difficulties. We have uh, discussed a lot of difficulties available in the renewable energy resources. Anyway, we should adopt the renewable energy resources <coughs> with proper planning and uh, proper planning to implement, sorry, to integrate them into the grid. That's the main concept, okay, uh, what we have discussed. And capitalizing the changing scenarios will be highly beneficial and monopolistic conservative days in power generations are over. So, uh, the dependence on hydro power plant, thermal power plants, everything will over. In future, we are going to integrate more, more, more amount of renewable energy resources and they will be negative, economic and flexible for power generation. Okay. So, there will be no hesitation to implement them. We should adopt them and utilize them properly. Okay. Thank you very much for your patient listen, listening. Okay, if you have any question, please raise.